Okay, understanding your process models and uh, all your models, what they're trying to tell you. This is going to be a presentation about mining those models. Uh, and I'm also going to explore a couple of user interfaces um, to see if we can actually find a user interface that some end users can use. This is me. I'm Tim Stevenson. For the last five years or so, I've been running a, a digital agency. Um, Probably my greatest learning is that we need to, to, to communicate these abstract ideas to customers is we really need a common language. That's what the standards give you. So I'm a big proponent of those standards. It's all very well having our particularly esoteric and brilliant languages, but the standards allow us to, to get to a common language which we can all understand one another easily. So um, I'm gonna, you, it, when you're running an agency, you never really know what's going to come through the door next. Um, every customer asserts that they're entirely unique. Um, but what we would assert is that uh, we need to simplify, standardize, and automate. The agency deals primarily with marketing automation. And it's about getting that first impression right. So marketing people call it lead generation. Uh, more operational folks might refer to it as uh, onboarding, but we're all good BPM geeks, so we'll call it a process. Single level process is one way of uh, handling it. Everything modeled in one big, huge process, like wall to wall, you know, you've seen those things printed out. Um, but I'm gonna suggest that we should uh, use some abstraction, our, our old friend abstraction. The basic process at the top is the same for everybody, but when it gets to that thing that is particular to you, then you can break it out in a, in a sort of a lower level. Example of that might be that everybody has their particular mail automation favor. Um, so copy and paste your way to glory. That's how we do it for the first few times, right? We go through every customer and we kind of go, yeah, well, it would be nice to optimize this and make sure that we're reusing. But, you know, that's where you end up. You know you've been there. <coughs> okay, so the thing about this is that sometimes that realization dawns slowly. You say, oh, it was a particular client, a particular requirement. It was always going to be tricky. So that's why we uh, came up with ModelMinder. The basic requirement is that we can ingest models from everywhere, from GitHub, from your existing running process engine, uh, from file systems, whatever, whatever. Uh, so we have to be able to ingest all those models, BPMN, CMN, et cetera. Um, DMN is the one that I really wanted to mention. So as well as ingesting them quickly, we need to answer lots of questions. Uh, what happens if I add an extra data item here? I'm going to show you a search interface, a simple Omnibox. Everybody knows Google. The Omnibox interface uh, is one way that we're going to explore interacting with this repository. Oh, I thought that was going to be quicker. Um, this is a nice way to find models quickly when you know the standard terms. If I know I'm looking for the data object called contact, then I can rapidly find all of the processes that use that. So much for simple search, but to, make, uh, to get impact analysis, we often need a conversation. Uh, conversation allows you to carry context between queries. Sometimes you might refer to it as search within a search or search within the search results. Uh, and that's, that's what the second tool is, the interface we'll look at. So having initially searched for processes that use the data object, we are also going to look for searching for where all the call activities are used, our abstraction friends, you know that le lower level thing. We can look for all the data objects that are used by a process. Uh, who does the work is my favorite question. Who does the work? The resources that are used on user tasks. Standard problems. Okay, so that all sounds simple. Next stop, world hunger, right? Not quite. These standards are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but there are some cracks uh, and there are still room for things to fall down between them. For example, our old friend, the service task. You guys all know the service task. The specification allows us to specify so much about WS star and web services that nobody cares about but is entirely silent about REST services. So we have to understand extensions. There's no way around it. We have to, um, for example, if I want to call that REST service, uh, I'm going to be using a proprietary extension at this point, uh, and we need to be able to understand those in our model as well. OK, so on to the model, on to the demo, even. Just bear with me a second whilst I 
switch between that one and this one. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So this is our Omnibox interface, the, the basic of basics, right? So, um, ooh. Let's see, let's see about our DMN models. Let's say uh, I want to search for, we won't get into the terminology at the moment, we'll just search for loans. I happen to know that I have a decision in here that deals with loans. Um, so here it is, the loan comparison. For those of you that know the DMN spec, it's our old friend, uh, Chapter 11, the Chapter 11 example. Uh, and I can, so first of all, I can see that there are BKMs. We can see the names of those BKMs. I can see decisions input data, the things that you would be familiar with if you were indeed familiar with this example. Now I have to remember that I'm supposed to have logged in at this point, don't I? Okay, so if I set up the session on there and refresh this one, we should find that we see that decision model. Uh, wait, and oh, this is the this is the little trick that I don't know quite why it does that. Yes, it is there. It's just pretending and masquerading not to be. Um, okay, so that doesn't look like the loan example, it is it? Okay. Play, play. Okay. Well, I apologize. I don't know. I've apparently deleted the loan example. Um, not good, not good. So that's, that's what one of the things you can see is that the repository is actually not, the, the live system that contains the, the decisions and the processes is not the same place where the repository has indexed those things. Um, okay, let's see if we can find a process then. Since we said that we do decisions and processes, let me see if I can find the process that is called send memo. Okay, so send memo... When I was talking about that um, digital agency approach, a lot of our customer relationship type of stuff, sending memos is kind of our crucial process that we're always doing. And it's intentionally set, it says send memo rather than send email because we use a whole bunch of templates that can then be injected into chat messages or centers, um, PDF documents in some cases. So this term of memo is one that covers all of those bases. Uh, just to give you a little flavor of it, um, if I go over to there, we should find that the send memo comes up. Oh, look, it does. Fantastic. This is our send memo. So you can see some data objects attached. We might search for those in a minute and so see what's being used. In fact, so it tells me that... Uh, I should have data inputs, contact ID, tenant ID, memo, et cetera, et cetera. And when we look at the process, I can confirm to you, confirm for yourselves, it is showing those data objects, data inputs down the left, and then there's some of these others as well, uh, within the process scope itself. Uh, so that's that. I was going to show, explain to you memos to the... The concept of memo is effectively a WYSIWYG one. Oh, that's why, you silly Billy, you're supposed to be using the MyWYG repository. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, for example, I've just set up a very trivial, uh, a very trivial um, template here that's... Uh, so that we might have a decision that sets up 
a regular contact, we try and find something that is really particular to that customer. Um, but all, failing all else, we just tell them about our la latest blog post so that we've got a catch uh, there. Uh, I will come back and visit that if we have some time at the end. Um, but now that I've remembered I was in the wrong place, I just want to show you the chapter 11 example again. go, my old friend. Okay, so these are, these are all of the decisions that are contained with that example. The business uh, knowledge models, BKMs. I can't say business knowledge model, it has to be BKM. And you can then go in and view um, the detail associated with each of them. Oh, it does that sometimes. <laughs> I thought that was an Internet Explorer thing. No, it's not going to lay out that nicely, is it? Okay. So, where were we? We were showing you the, the, the send memo process. We've searched for processes. We've searched for decisions. Um, I told you that the memos are not always email. Okay, so that's one interface. And, but it, as I said in the setup slides, that's, just, uh, that's only one, uh, one level of search. So let's see if we can go over to Slack where I have my BPM Next session. So we've got a set, we've got a, a channel. Okay, I don't know what that's telling me. So we need to say hello to our model minder. Okay, you mentioned model minder, but they're not in this channel. Would you like to invite them? Yes, I probably would like to invite them. Hi, says model minder, good to see you again. So, uh, I don't really know what, what we're doing here. So, what can you help me with? I've indexed all your models so I can help you find the one you need and work out impact of changes you're planning. Ask me to search, list, open, etc., and I'll do my best to understand as you type. So, let's see then. What should I, what should I find? What should I find? Let's see if we can uh, find... Let's just do a nice, easy thing. Let's fetch all the BPMN models. Okay. I found 63 models. Here's the first few. Go on. Okay. This is not what I want to see. All right, let's start over. Okay, we're ready. What are we looking for? We are looking for... Uh, what are we looking for? Search for BPMN models. Ah, I found 63 models and here's the first few, it tells me. Good, that's more promising, isn't it? Who knew, by the way, when I was looking for a bunch of models, just to random ones, to see what craziness I might find, I indexed the MyWig models, the model interchange working group, and who knew that we had a fridge repair service in there? So I guess somebody probably in this room does know that because one of, probably the person in this room created it. But um, anyway, we have a fridge repair service, which uh, is interesting. Um, let's see. Okay, you said you had 63. Have you got any more then? Let's see. What else have I got? Okay, here's a few others. Um, right, oh, I told you my favorite question. Who does the work? Okay, so on the fridge repair service, a user does the work. And we can see that some of the processes do not use any resources, uh, so they, they obviously don't list any. And uh, this SID, I'm not sure what SID is. SID apparently has a team assistant, a prover, and an accountant. Oh, that starts to ring a bell. Who remembers the demo that we did about the, uh, the, the support call? So uh, let's, that, Sid was number six. Let's see if number six will come up. Okay, let me know if you did anything else. Okay, so wrong. Start over. Or what should we see? See if we, how, how clever is it? Let's restart. Is restart going to take me to the beginning? Okay, we're ready. Uh, Fire, BPMN, and more, and... 
Sid was what we were after, wasn't it? Let's see. Okay, coming right up. Hurrah. Handle invoice. Yes, I thought that rang a bell. Handle invoice. Handle invoice. Handle invoice. Come on, where are you? So you can see that the connection between the two things is not productized yet. Come on. This is the problem of having two different channels that I'm... Uh, dotting between. Right. Well, apparently I indexed the repository, but I didn't deploy those things. Um, okay, well that was interesting then, wasn't it? So let's go and see what else we can do. I asked who does the work. What else did we want to know? Let's see. We wanted to talk about send memo, didn't we? And see what the data objects are there. So let's narrow it down to calls for send memo. Oh, hang on, what's this? Ah, okay. This is going terribly well. Let's start over. Uh, fetch BPMN. And let's narrow down to calls to send memo. Ah, phew. It managed to understand me this time. I found six models, it says. Uh, Follow-up contact, that sounds reasonable, doesn't it? It's the sort of thing that we do in our CRM uh, world quite a lot. We, we've got a lead, we've got a contact, a prospect, whatever you call it. We're going to follow them up. Um, send the keep in touch email. That's, you, you, you get the idea. So all of these are going to be using that, that reuse, that send memo uh, sub-process, if you want to call it a sub-process. Um, okay, and let's talk about data. We didn't talk about data yet, so the data objects. Um, tell me about the data. Here's a list of the data. So we can see, and you're probably not surprised at this point, to see that the things that we're passing around pretty often are contact IDs. Uh, in one of those cases there, we've got the decision response. Uh, that uh, So we're invoking a decision, which basically says which memo are we going to send based on what we know about the customer, and so on and so forth. Okay. Has some kind person been keeping track of time for me? Hmm? I have more time. That's good. Uh, okay, so... How is this working? Let's have a look under the surface a little bit then, shall we, and see uh, what we're doing. Now, if I look in here, uh, what did I call it? BPM Next? Oh, yes, BPM Next. So, the essence of what our, our model minder bot is doing is, is this, this process here. Um, so, and one of the things is that we've explored a bunch of different technologies to fulfill each of these, each of these activities. Um, so they are, they are pluggable. We're taking advantage of, of the fact that we've got a process engine to be able to string these things together. But whichever technologies we're using, um, we basically perform these steps. So we remove stop words. Things like the very rarely add any context to the search. So with stop words, we apply synonyms. And this is one of the places that you can actually train train uh, the, the model a little bit because what I might use as synonyms for process may not be the same synonyms that you, you use, so it's useful to be able to apply that. Um, one of the explorations that we did is with the Microsoft Lewis engine, which is particularly useful uh, for that synonyms bit piece because you can do it dynamically and keep coming back to it. So if, uh, if such as some of my uh, searches weren't understood, you can train it with the extra words over time. Uh, we infer an action, which fundamentally boils down to pretty simple, like are we searching for something? Are we listing details about the things we've already found? Uh, there's a few others like help and, and, and stuff too. 
we infer a subject. By and large, the subjects are the, the constructs that you would have seen on our OmniSearch. Uh, you know, so the, the, the BKMs, the decisions, the input data, the item definitions, if we're talking about DMN, and similarly for, for process, there's actually a lot more for BPMN. But, so those are the subjects of our, our query. Um, we perform the query, so I didn't mention that because that's the invisible bit, that's the bit below the water in the iceberg analogy. Uh, the index that is sitting out there um, ha we, has a query language basically is what I'm saying to that. Um, and then when we, when in the bot case we need to transform the result of the index into something that sounds or approximates to sort of human language and we can have fun with you know, HAL and other things like that. Sorry, Dave. Um, okay. And I think, oh, the one other thing that I might just revisit to, uh, just to sort of put a little color onto this, um, one of these must be already logged into the right place, mustn't it? So if I'm, if I'm in my CRM, that's, you know, like our super lightweight. No, don't show that. So if I'm, if I'm in my CRM and I've got a couple of, you know, just a simple little uh, test database here. So my send memo, how that actually manifests, one of the actions common action, very commonly we're still using email, although we do support the tweets and the, um, the text messages as well, actually, Slack messages. Uh, so we, we can manually invoke, uh, I've only got a couple of templates as I showed you, um, but we can preview that, hi Sarah, this is my scintillating piece of content for you that will be very engaging. Uh, and then, assuming that I'm happy with the merge that I can preview there, we can send it off by email. Um, sometimes we use more complicated templates that will actually form PDFs, so like contracts, actually, invoices, that type of stuff. So you can download it as a PDF if that was appropriate to your memo. So without, I just, what it occurred to me as I arrived here that actually a couple of years ago I was telling you about the CRM piece, so I just wanted to give that little touch uh, and revisit that again. Yes, yeah, so the, there's, there's my repository. How can I, uh, what questions can I tell you about this? Lloyd, how did I know? Yeah. So just to... In this particular example, um, this is set up to index a file system, so it's just a folder of stuff. Um, but like I say, and that's why there's a, discrep a discrepancy between the repository and the index, is because the repository only has some of those things loaded up. Uh, I did say at the beginning, and it was like incredibly important to us to be able to do this impact analysis, uh, that we can index the, the live process engine as well. In that particular case, we're looking at XML from the database as opposed to XML from the file system. So, what would be a kind of, if you walk into a situation where you're going to deploy this to repository, so this is a software service kind of thing? Yeah. Right. So, what would be a good use case for that? Is it just like a user interface that you can have to point this to the repository? Exactly. So each, each customer is able to, well, effectively, each customer has their own set of processes, and we would set up the repository to look at that set of processes. If, I mean, the impact analysis is most usefully served by looking at the GitHub version checked in and looking at the process engine running version and then, like, compare and contrast. You know, oh, I don't think we should roll this one out. It's got an extra data object. It's going to fall over. That type of stuff. Okay. Anything else? Thank I you. Tim, thank you. Thank you.